The Garmin Phoenix 7 is the most expensive smartwatch I've ever bought, costing $700, which is even 100 bucks more than what the Phoenix 6 released for. I spent the last week scientifically checking the accuracy of the health metrics that the Garmin Phoenix 7 provides, because if I spend $700 on a smartwatch, I wanna make sure it accurately keeps track of my health. I tested the heart rate monitor, the sleep tracking, the SpO2 measurements, and the GPS. And I must say, after all of that testing, I have mixed feelings about this watch. I do think there's a group of people for it could make sense to spend $700 on the Phoenix 7. However, I also think that for the majority of people, there are probably cheaper alternatives, both from Garmin and from other brands that probably provide more value. Therefore, I will also briefly compare the Phoenix 7 to the Garmin Venue 2, Garmin Vivo Move Sport, and Apple Watch Series 7. Okay, let's dive into the test results and see if the Phoenix 7 is for you. And let's start with the sleep tracking, since I'm uniquely positioned to test the sleep stage tracking. Like most new Garmin watches, the Phoenix 7 has advanced sleep monitoring, which tracks your sleep stage oxygen saturation of the blood and breathing rate. To check if the Phoenix 7 can correctly detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves. Here I show an overview of the sleep tracking accuracy. On top are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Phoenix 7. I wore both the EEG device and the Phoenix 7 to bed for four nights, and I'll see how close the predictions of the Phoenix 7 are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was predicted as each sleep stage by the Phoenix 7. If they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. However, as you can see, this is far from true. First of all, we see that only 24% of what was deep sleep was also correctly detected as deep sleep by the Phoenix 7. Most of what was deep sleep, around 72%, was actually detected as being light sleep. We can see that even better by looking at the individual nights, like in this example right here. On top are the sleep stages as recorded by the Dream 2 EEG headband, with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot, but now for the Phoenix 7. I've highlighted all the deep sleep here in purple, and as you can see, I had some deep sleep in the beginning of the night, and only part of that was detected by the Phoenix 7. The Phoenix 7 also detected a bit of extra deep sleep. And for the second example night right here, we see something similar, with only part of the deep sleep detected and also some extra deep sleep detected. Light sleep detection on the other hand was better, with about two thirds of the light sleep correctly detected as being light sleep. If the light sleep was tracked incorrectly, it was mostly mistaken for REM sleep but it was also sometimes confused with the wake time. REM sleep detection is again not very good with only about a third of the REM sleep correctly detected. Most REM sleep is actually detected as light sleep by the Phoenix 7. Looking at the individual nights, it becomes clear why that is. Now in red here, I marked my real REM sleep, and as you can see on the bottom, the Phoenix 7 only detected a small fraction of the REM sleep correctly. Now this second example night right here is the best night when it comes to REM sleep tracking for the Phoenix 7. However, still only three out of five REM sleep segments are correctly detected. This also means we cannot really see the sleep cycles. You go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep, which is marked here in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep, marked here in red. As you can see, I had one, two, three, four complete sleep cycles this night. However, based on just the data from the Phoenix 7, you would not be able to see this at all. Awake detection is actually pretty good, with about 72% of awake moments correctly detected. If awake moments were incorrectly detected, they were mostly confused with light sleep. Of course, this makes some sense, since light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. Looking at the individual nights, we can indeed confirm this. Basically, all three awake moments were correctly detected here by the Garmin Phoenix 7. However, it does appear to be quite sensitive, detecting my awake moments as being longer and also detecting extra awake moments. For those of you that watched last week's video on the newly released Garmin Venue 2 Plus, this overview of the sleep tracking might have looked somewhat familiar. Here are those results side by side. On the left are the results for the Phoenix 7 and on the right the results for the Venue 2 Plus. As you can see, the performance for both is very similar. Both are pretty okay at detecting awake moments. However, detecting the actual sleep stages is less good. And as you might also remember from last week's video, another recently released Garmin watch performed much better at sleep staging, namely the much cheaper Garmin VivoMove Sport. I wore the VivoMove Sport on my right arm whilst wearing the Phoenix 7 on my left arm. Here I show the first night of sleep tracking again, but now including both the Phoenix 7 and the VivoMove Sport. On top is the EEG headband, in the middle of the Phoenix 7 and on the bottom the VivoMove Sport. In purple is the deep sleep according to the EEG device, and as you can see, the Vivo Move Sport correctly detected the deep sleep, however, the Phoenix 7 only detected part of it. And we see the same for this second night. The Vivo Move Sport is almost spot on when it comes to deep sleep detection, and the Phoenix 7, well, it's not. 
For REM sleep marked here in red, we see mostly the same thing. For this knight, the Phoenix 7 in the middle here is just bad at REM sleep tracking, whereas the Vivo Move Sport detected all four segments correctly, though the length of those segments is a bit off. Now for this knight, the Phoenix 7 performed a bit better, as you can see in the middle here. However, still, the Vivo Move Sport was a lot better than the Phoenix 7, as you can see on the bottom right here. What the Phoenix 7 did perform better at was awake time detection. It appears to be more sensitive at detecting awake moments, and it more or less correctly detected my awake moments, though it did detect them as being too long. The Viva Move Sport actually only detected one of my awake moments. So why is there such a difference between these two Garmin devices? Well, honestly, I'm not sure. I would expect them to use the same algorithm and the Vivo Move Sport actually has an older generation of sensors. I went through the settings for both watches and they appear to be basically the same and they also had a similar sleep schedule programmed in. For the first night with the Phoenix 7, I did have the continuous pulse ox turned off, but I turned that on and it didn't change anything. I also switched the Vivo Move Sport from wearing it from my left arm last week to my right arm this week. And again, it kept performing equally well. Garmin also recommends wearing watches at least two hours before bed and a few nights this week I did not manage to wear the watches continuously two hours before bed. However, I always put the Vivo Move Sport and Phoenix 7 on and off at the same time so this cannot explain the difference. There might still be some difference in the settings that I'm not aware of so if you know that let us know in the comments below and I'll personally also keep digging. Now what might be even more important than comparing the Phoenix 7 to other Garmin devices is comparing it to all the other brands on the market. So how does the Phoenix 7 compare to some of the best and worst sleep trackers? This graph shows that overview. On the horizontal axis, we have the average accuracy over the four individual sleep stages. And on the vertical axis, we have the accuracy of the worst sleep stage. The better a device, the more to the top right it is. And as you can see, the best devices include different Fitbits. In this case, the Sense, Inspire 2 and Charge 5, and also the Whoopstrap 3.0, 4.0, and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. The Phoenix 7 here on the bottom left is not amongst the better sleep trackers. Comparing that to three other Garmin watches, we see it performs very similarly to the Garmin Venue 2 Plus and the Garmin Venue 2. However, as we saw before, the Garmin Vivo Move Sport is a lot better and much closer to the performance of the best watches. One other thing I noticed is that the Phoenix 7, similar to the Venue 2 Plus, consistently detected me as falling asleep about 15 minutes too late each night, which is something you should be aware of. Now before moving on to the heart rate accuracy, I should mention that I tested the standard Phoenix 7 in this video. There are many more models like the 7S, 7X and Sapphire versions, which are all very similar to the standard Phoenix 7. However, the slightly different form factors could still have small effects that I cannot really account for in my testing. Unfortunately, since I'm not yet as established as the more famous reviewer that have been on the YouTube platform longer, Garmin has not lent me any watches to review. So in order to review them, I need to buy all the watches myself. If you want to help the channel get noticed by Garmin, a sub to the channel and pressing like on this video would really go a long way. That will also help me get these reviews out faster. Moving on, we can conclude that the sleep tracking is underwhelming on the Phoenix 7. However, I expect that what is more important to most people buying this watch is the heart rate tracking. This is something that the Garmin Venue 2, which has the same sensor, was quite good at. However, as we saw last week, strangely enough, the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, also with the same sensor, was not quite as good. So, what about the Phoenix 7? Is that any good at heart rate tracking? Let's take a look at the results during spinning, cycling and weightlifting. In the next set of tests, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Phoenix 7 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can record my heart rate very accurately. We'll start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement and will therefore produce less noise. Here we see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Phoenix 7. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line at roughly the same value for the Polo H10 and the Phoenix 7. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. And as you can see, there's a pretty good agreement between the ECG chest strap and the Phoenix 7, as most points are along the blue line. However, we also see that there are some points right here above the blue line, similar to what we saw last week for the Venue 2 Plus. This indicates that while my heart rate was low, the Phoenix 7 detected a too high heart rate. We can see why that is by looking at the individual rides. Along the horizontal axis here we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 chest strap and in red my heart rate according to the Phoenix 7. As you can see for most of the ride the two lines overlap almost perfectly and you can basically not see the red line of the Phoenix 7 at all. However it seems that quite often when I take a break and my heart rate goes down the Phoenix 7 shows some delay in picking up on that decreased heart rate. You can see the most clear case right here but there's also more subtle moments like right here right here and right here. And we see the same thing for this second spinning session and probably even more clearly. During this first short break right here, it did not detect my decreased heart rate at all. And we also see a delay in the next three breaks, right here, right here and right here. 
All in all, this is still not bad compared to many other devices. However, there are definitely better devices out there. Next, let's take a look at cycling outside for which the overview is displayed here. Generally, this is more difficult for watches since there's much more movement and bumpiness. Surprisingly, this actually looks a bit better than cycling indoors. There's a pretty good agreement between the chest strap and the Phoenix 7. Looking at the individual rides, this becomes even clearer. As you can see right here, there's mostly a pretty good agreement. Sometimes there's a slight delay in the heart rate detection of the Phoenix 7, especially in it picking up an increased heart rate. However, this still looks pretty good compared to most devices. And we see the same thing for most rides, like this one right here, and also this one right here, where the overall agreement is quite good. There was only one out of six rides where the Phoenix 7 struggled. As you can see right here, for the first half of my ride, it did not correctly detect my heart rate. Now let's take a look at the most difficult type of exercise, weightlifting. Each time I do a set, you can see in blue that my heart rate increases. Now during the first half of this weightlifting session, the watch was more or less able to keep track of my heart rate pretty accurately. Now I was doing flies during the first half of the training, however the moment I started doing dips, which was the second half of the training, the watch started to struggle. During the second weightlifting session where I worked on my biceps and back, the Phoenix 7 was basically not able to keep track of my heart rate, as you can see right here, where it misses all of the peaks in my heart rate except for this one right here. So the Phoenix 7 appears to be good enough during different cardio workouts, in this case cycling indoors and outdoors, however it did not do great during weightlifting. Interestingly, for some reason it did not perform quite as well as the Garmin Venue 2 with the same sensor, at least on me. To show that, here are the results for the Phoenix 7 for spinning we were just looking at. And if we switch to the Garmin Venue 2, we get these results. Even though both are good, the results for the Venue 2 are definitely better. Now I made the points more transparent here because I have many more measurements and otherwise you wouldn't be able to see where most of the points are. Now these are the cycling results for the Phoenix 7 and here the Venue 2 appears to perform more or less similarly. Next, looking at weightlifting for the Phoenix 7, we do see that the Venue 2 appears to perform a bit better. Finally, I do really very briefly need to mention the performance of the Apple Watch Series 7 when it comes to heart rate tracking. Here you can see the performance of the Apple Watch 7 during spinning and as you can see it's almost perfect. We see something similar right here for cycling outside. The deviations are just slightly larger but all in all it's almost spot on. And we see the same thing for weightlifting right here, which is again amazing for a watch. Now, I should note that during weightlifting, the Apple Watch sometimes loses the heart rate signal briefly when I'm doing a set and misses part of the peak. However, overall, it's still the number one wrist-worn heart rate tracker. Now, the Phoenix 7 is a decent heart rate tracker, it's just not quite as good as the Apple Watch. The main downside of the Apple Watch is, of course, its poor battery life. And this is something that the Phoenix 7 is a complete beast at, with more than two weeks of battery life. Whereas heart rate is generally measured with green light, red and infrared light are used to measure oxygen saturation. Over the last week I measured my oxygen saturation at ground level in the morning and evening using the Phoenix 7. At the same time I also recorded my oxygen saturation using a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. Now at ground level my oxygen saturation should be within my normal range which is generally between 97 and 100 percent. The Phoenix 7 should not detect any low values during this test. On the left are 24 measurements taken with the Phoenix 7 and on the right are matched measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. As you can see the Phoenix 7 is mostly in the same range as the finger pulse oximeter. However, still sometimes it does detect a too low SpO2 value. Overall, this is not bad. However, I would recommend that when you do get a low measurement with the Phoenix 7, you reposition the watch on your wrist and take a few more measurements. That way you can ensure that the low measurement was not a fluke. What about GPS tracking? I tested that while cycling to and from work. I wanted to test two things. One, how long does it take for the watch to get a GPS signal? And two, how well the GPS signals overlap when cycling the same route multiple times? That is displayed here for three times I cycled to work. I started the activity the moment I was ready to leave and I did not provide the watch with any extra time to acquire the signal. The green marker indicates the moment that it connected the GPS signal and as you can see it almost always acquired the signal almost instantly which is really good. Now one time it needed a few seconds to get a more accurate location but overall this is good. If we now look at the consistency between the routes, this looks amazing. For most of the route, the lines overlap very well. Sometimes there's a bit more deviation, however overall this is looking very good. As you can see, the lines overlap very well and I'm pretty impressed with the GPS accuracy of the Phoenix 7. We can look at the same thing when I cycled back from work and again it acquired the signal really quickly and the lines overlap super well. Overall, I would say that out of all of the devices I've tested so far, this is looking the best when it comes to GPS tracking. This looks really good, but I should note that the normal version of the Phoenix 7 that I tested here does not even have the multiband GPS that the Sapphire line of the Phoenix 7 has, so the Sapphire versions of the Phoenix 7 could be even better. However, as other reviewers like Ray from DC Rainmaker have noted, this might not be that big of an improvement over the standard GPS tracking. As I mentioned before, I have mixed feelings about the Phoenix 7. Taking into account all features, the health tracking of the Phoenix 7 has both positives and negatives. The GPS tracking seems great, and the heart rate tracking is 
pretty good. The oxygen saturation measurements are only so-so and the sleep stage tracking is not very good. From the sleep stage tracking I would only trust the total time asleep. Looking at it from just this limited scope, all of these things combined do not warrant a $700 price tag. However, in addition to these health features, the Phoenix 7 has a number of other features, one of the most important ones being built-in maps. This could be extremely valuable for people that go hiking or skiing a lot, and this also means that there's definitely a group of people out there for which this watch, the Phoenix 7, might be the best choice. It might be that you just need okay health features and that the additional features like the maps and incredible battery life are the most important things. However, I do think that for many of you that are just looking to track your general health and daily workouts, the Phoenix 7 is a bit overkill and there are better or cheaper devices out there for you. Take for instance the Garmin Venue 2, this has good heart rate tracking and many of the same health features and you can likely find it for half of the price of the Phoenix 7. I'll link a video reviewing that watch up here. Now as a smartwatch and a heart rate tracker, the Apple Watch is definitely much better than the Phoenix 7, but keep in mind that the battery life is not very good and check out those videos right here. The Huawei Watch GT3 also has a great heart rate monitor and is about a third of the price of the Phoenix 7. So whilst there's definitely a market for the Phoenix 7, I'd really recommend you consider if you need the more advanced features it provides. Now I hope this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.